just to hear the things that these kids were praying. Um, I was just like, this is invaluable. This is invaluable. And maybe they've never had someone open the floor for them. Hey friends, Vincent, Rayma, Cynthia, welcome to this conversation about Life Why City. Why are you guys excited? Very, yes. Good morning, very Good ready. Morning. Yes. yes. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Me Let's too. Do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, okay. So LifeWise Academy, we do Bible education, public school students during school hours. Uh, and we have a standard process and uh, we have all these resources and tools and things and for communities all over the nation. Um, but as Vincent, you came on the team a few years ago, we started to realize that we needed to customize things um, for the inner our inner city programs mm -hmm. and so uh, under your leadership we developed this thing of lifewise citywide and that's what our conversation is about lifewise okay. citywide and uh so vincent maybe um recap us on what is lifewise citywide like what uh how is it distinct from the typical lifewise approach basically we we uh, got started as other programs and uh, recognize that within a city, you have a broad base. Uh, the cities are large. Columbus City has over 100, I think it's 118 schools. Uh, so we started looking at uh, what would it be like to um, expand programs. Um, we were very successful in getting our first program started at Mifflin. Um, and Windsor STEM were in our first year. And uh, as we continued to grow, we started thinking about the process and well, 118 directors, 100 and, you know, so, you know. Staffs. Yeah, like one director for 118 right, schools? Right, 118 <laughs> directors? For what, that, how, how's this gonna right. work? So, so we looked at it and we started thinking about, okay, one, what are the advantages that we have? We have the whole city. So we have a whole broad city where people go to church all over. Uh, and live all over. So we looked at how can we compile those resources under one umbrella and basically dispatch the resources as needed. So whether it be volunteers, uh, sometimes financial support, um, you know, prayer support, um, but ultimately looking at a t uh, being able to expand throughout the city, bringing on area directors to kind of divide it up um, and uh, site coordinators at each site to help you know, um, streamline our process and uh, make it a unified effort within the city. Excellent. And so you've been pilot piloting that here in Columbus for how many? This is our this is our first year with that pilot. It's our first we, year with the pilot, but right. we've been serving the city for three years. Three years. And a massive part of that history is sitting in the room. The foundation. The foundation. <laughs> I, I should have said three of my favorite people in the whole world <laughs> who I'm sitting with right here. We knew if we could get in the room, uh, magic would happen. So uh, Cynthia Lampkins on our first ever city steering committee. I think retroactively we can call it citywide. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Our first ever citywide <laughs> steering committee. Rayma Forbes, our first ever citywide <laughs> teacher. Tell us how you got... Um, and we'll kind of do that chronological order because you help get it going. And then you mm -hmm. started doing the teaching. Just tell us the story. Like, how'd you hear about it? How'd you get plugged in? How was God faithful in the process so and all, <laughs> all of that? Well, we got started because of a conversation that you all had with our pastor, Dr. David C. Forbes. Oh, yes. And, the legend. Um, yes, yeah. the legend. <laughs> and so, so during that conversation, you know, or after that conversation, Dr. Forbes wanted to put together a team of people to launch LifeWise. And of course, you know, we um, started with Cassidy Elementary, if you mm -hmm. can remember, right. and mm -hmm. um, things, you know, we were trying to, you know, put foot, feet to the pavement. We were reaching out, trying to find these families that were in the school of, you know, Cassidy Elementary. And we um, we just really couldn't get ground that we wanted to get um, between the families and then the principal at Cassie at the time. And so then um, we reached out to Mifflin and mm -hmm. Mifflin's principal was on board. And so then we started, you know, going into the school, reaching out to the um, families at Mifflin mm -hmm. uh, Middle School. And then we were able to get the, you know, the ball rolling at Mifflin Middle School. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Well, I still remember. Um, I th that weeknight when one of the first, I think the first ever steering committee meeting, 
uh, with members from your church mm-hmm. and I had just put my little kids to bed and then I snuck into the corner of my master bedroom and put up my laptop and uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Forbes was on the call mm-hmm. and we were having that conversation to see mm-hmm. all that's happened. So, um, so Cynthia, you're part of the steering committee, get things going. Mm-hmm. And then I also recall very clearly seeing a video, Vince, I think you took of the very first class yeah. uh, where students and everybody's clapping them in. Yep. Yes. So there yeah. I see yeah. um, members of the church. Mm-hmm. Yeah dressed well, clapping the kids in, mm-hmm. and Rama, you got to teach those classes. Tell us your story. How'd you get connected? Um, tell us about the origins. So I, I definitely have to mention Miss Cynthia because she is just a type of superwoman, honestly. She really <laughs> is. Sure. Um, right, right. As soon as she's given anything, she gives it her all and she goes for it. And so I believe we had a conversation. I know I had talked with my dad who happens to be the pastor, but he's very passionate about children um, advancing in the kingdom. And so when it was very simple, when it came to me, I was like, yeah, absolutely. But it was like, there's this phenomenal element to it because it was really unprecedented. I hadn't heard. Sure public school kids being able to have the opportunity to leave school Mm -hmm. and um, be encouraged by the word of God and in this particular way. So I was really excited, but I was coming out of um, children's ministry. Um, Many years I had taught children's ministry at our church. And so it was just a no brainer for me. And I was like, sign me up. I'm on board. And it's been great ever since. What is the, um, what would you say is like the, difference you see between the children's ministry you'd been a part of in the church setting Sunday morning versus Mm -hmm. this type of ministry where we're pulling kids out of the school building during the school day, teaching them the Bible. What's the, Mm -hmm. what are some of the differences? That's a great question. Um, I would say just in when we're doing children's ministry at church, these kids are really coming from more of a trained Um, aspect of I go to church. I'm very familiar in my household. This is what we do. We go to church. Um, We have conversations surrounding church at home. Mm -hmm. Um, Our faith is really coddled and nurtured, even in a home setting. And we're coming to church kind of as a um, faithful extra layer of what we learn at home. But I find that when we're talking about bringing um, these kids in from the inner city schools. Some of them have a little bit of background, Mm -hmm. but many of them don't. Mm -hmm. Many of them don't have any concept of who God is, his nature, his character, how he feels about them, and that they're cared for and that they're loved. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I find that there's a lot of drastic, we know like in Christianity and just in our walk, being believers and followers of Christ, you're gonna have that dynamic of, I once was this and now I'm this. So that's kind of a foundational piece. But for these kids, I mean, not only is that transformation that you get Mm -hmm. to see um, obviously very evident, but there's just it's just more weighty because Mm -hmm. they really are like, you came here to be with me and to teach me about this. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never heard of anything like this. I remember there was one kid that we had and he just could not, he was just like, God created the world and he created me like, whoa, you know, like Mm -hmm. he just really had to really soak that in. But he was one of the kids that was like, you know what, this is where I want to be. And Mm -hmm. he just was a sponge. I find Mm. the kids are. So this is such a a precious opportunity. It's been really cool. We, you know, we, LifeWise exists to reach those kids that don't Mm -hmm. have access to Mm -hmm. the Bible, whose parents aren't taking them to church. And sometimes Mm -hmm. when people hear about what we do, Mm -hmm. they'll wrongly assume that it is just the church families that will sign up. And Mm -hmm. because they'll think, I guess it makes sense. Um, Well, why would a family that doesn't go to church sign their kids up? So surely it's just church kids. And and that's not what we see at all, right? Right. Like we see families, there's a certain level of families know that they're kind of neglecting these things and they Mm -hmm. want to um, take the step uh, for their kids. Um, Vince, is that what you see elsewhere? Like, how do you see that dynamic play out uh, that Raymond was just talking about that these kids maybe don't have this background? Mm -hmm. Um, I know you were kind of one of those kids. You tell that story from when you were a kid. I just (laughs) told that story yesterday at a house. So... (laughs) Um, but I, I, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that Raymond points out and one of the things that I recall, and I'm always fascinated by it, are the questions, mm. uh, because they don't have a foundation. A lot of times they're asking questions because it's all new to them. And, you know, just to, um, absorb the truth, you know, 
I am, you know, created in the image of God. I, you know, God f- created the whole world. Um, you know, um, I remember the lesson on uh, uh, sin and uh, obedience and just how kids just come to an understanding of, you know, the truth that's right before them. Um, and that happens all across the city, um, you know, and all across grade levels. Uh, yeah. So we're right now in K through 12, pretty uh, one through 12. We haven't got a kindergarten class yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I see it consistently across the board where the kids are so hungry just to ask the questions. And, and, and more than that, and Rayma points to a good thing as well, it's the relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, here are individuals that are giving attention to me. They're hearing my prayer requests. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, responding to what I'm saying and they're uh, giving me value uh, and, and, and showing me that I'm worth, mm-hmm. um, you know, that attention. Yeah. And we see results in terms of how that's impacting, um, you know, attendance because the kids want to be at the program. And then also, um, you know, for those that are have struggled sometimes with their discipline uh, every mm-hmm. now and then we're hearing stories of, you know, how they are. Uh, transforming in terms of uh, doing, making different decisions as opposed to going for what they know, uh, what they've been accustomed to. I'll say sure. it like that in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so Cynthia, you um, as what did I hear? Superwoman? Is that? Yeah. I think oh, yeah. that. I think she's Who's Gal cape. Gadot? Yeah. We don't know anymore. I think we it's her cape's over in the corner. I, saw I think it, it is. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Cindy, you're part of that founding steering committee. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been a part of other steering committees mm-hmm. for other school districts. Mm-hmm. You've been engaged in the community. Um, tell me, wh- so one of the most, ex- one of the more exciting things, of course, the impact on students, that's the main mm-hmm. thing, but is to see the community mobilized, to see the community unified, mm-hmm. to see churches come together and to mm-hmm. see um, some people who maybe almost had lost hope for mm-hmm. the next generation, mm-hmm. um, finding this level of excitement and optimism. How have you seen in all of your circles, mm-hmm. church context, mm-hmm. community, uh, God raising up his people mm-hmm. for this work? Wow. Um, that is definitely an interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, of course, my my first experience was with Columbus Christian Center, but we're yeah. always passionate. We have no choice to be passionate That's right. because Dr. Forbes <laughs> will bring it and bring it right strong. now. <laughs> like, yeah, so, um, but we had a very passionate team that was was excited and looking forward. And we, like Grandma said, uh, you can teach the Bible to public school children like off-site, like, wait, we were asking this, like, wait a minute, how does this work? Right. Sure. Wait, it's a law? Wait a minute, wait a minute, right. wait a minute. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. And so um, we were all excited about that. And so, again, like I mentioned, us coming together, us praying, like, mm. you know, for um, strategies on how we can put this, you know, into play and how we can bring it to fruition. Um, our, our church our church family was very excited. Um, and then when we started mentioning it to the Mifflin um, Mifflin, the Mifflin Middle School's family, like those families were excited. Mm-hmm. Um, they were happy. They was like, oh, yes, sign my kid. Oh, yes, you're going. Whether you want to go or not, parents were saying, you're going. <laughs> and so, you know, the parents yeah. were excited about it. And then when I um, seen it launched in Columbus, yeah. I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Gahanna, like mm. we need to get this started in Gahanna. And so I went out to the community interest list and I was like, look, I started sharing it on my Facebook page. We need Gahanna uh, families to sign up on this community interest list to let you know our community know that we want to get likewise started in our school district. And so I was getting people. And then when I found out, oh, you don't just have to live in Gahanna to do that. You can just work in Gahanna to, to do that. So I got people that were working in Gahanna. Yep. And so then I also got people that were attending church in Gahanna because yep. they could sign people up. And so, you know, people started signing up. And finally, we got to the list, the list to the point where you guys are recognizing it. And I was oh, like, yeah. yes, you know, we got we got some attention. And so from there, we got the steering committee, you know, set up in Gahanna. And my gosh, they are phenomenal. Um, I've met some very mm-hmm. interesting, passionate people that are, you know, in the process of getting that set up in Gahanna. Mm-hmm. And it will happen. Like I said, you got to have faith. You can't lose sight just because the enemy might make you think that it's not going to be in the community. He's a lie. He's the father of lies. It's going to be in Gahanna. Mm -hmm. You wait and see. Well, so and (laughs) we might as well point this out that at least in Ohio, the school districts don't have to 
do this, right? Like, right. And that's what's happened in Gehanna. We've mm-hmm. had some delays. We've had some stalling. Mm-hmm. And there's been, it happens sometimes. Now, mm-hmm. about 90% of the time, mm-hmm. it's fairly smooth sailing. Um, but that's all the more reason that we have to pray. Have we to. have to get the community mm-hmm behind it, mm-hmm. have to get organized mm-hmm. and have to demonstrate mm-hmm. the value. We just had a report done uh, with a group in Indianapolis that's showing that LifeWise schools, schools that implement LifeWise, their attendance goes up, mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. suspensions go down mm-hmm. to the point, this is wild, to the point that even though kids are getting pulled out of class, their overall class time actually increases, mm-hmm. net increase because mm-hmm. attendance mm-hmm. is so much higher. Kids are excited to right. show up for school. Right. And so it's that's all part of the battle. Um, but most schools, Vince, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. especially in Columbus City, this, the principals are anxious for LifeWise. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about that dynamic, about how the principals and right. administrators have, have responded. You know, I think LifeWise is really such a rich tool um, And principals um, in a lot of, I think, schools across the country, you know, we ask our teachers to be the end all be all and they do so much. Um, And LifeWise gives an opportunity for churches to really kind of bring resources to the table. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I know it's Bible based character education, but we also have seen where, um, you know, uh, We've been able to go in uh, on other days uh, and just be a support to schools mm-hmm. with some mentoring in some different communities where once the church gets involved with the LifeWise component, they're like, what else can we do? Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, uh, right. you know, when we re- are able to respond to like food insecurities, uh, I've, I've heard situations where uh, people connected to housing situations for families. Mm-hmm. It's an additional resource to mm-hmm. where, um, you know, you can really be a support to the school. But then also... You give kids opportunities to be able to share information with young people. And it's not necessarily that we're trying to figure out, you know, or or be nosy, but our kids are hurting. Mm -hmm. And in a classroom of one to 25 with a teacher, um, it's impossible to hear everything that's going on. Right. And so here you have kids that are attending LifeWise classes and may say something that's going on with their family that otherwise a teacher may not have known. Right. We just heard a situation about a young man that was contemplating suicide, but mm-hmm. prayed with a LifeWise teacher. And that was able to be communicated with the school, with the church, and really be able to help that young man to kind of find footing, mm-hmm. knowing that mm-hmm. there's a caring community around him. That's mm-hmm. what LifeWise brings to the table. You know, not just the, mm-hmm. the Bible based character education, phenomenal, mm-hmm. but the resources in terms of the love of God, being able to connect with kids and be an extra set of ears and a mouthpiece to be able to communicate the needs of what's going on with families. I don't understand why any school district wouldn't welcome that as a support to the children Absolutely. in that community mm-hmm. and yeah. families. Yeah, I heard somebody say yes. uh, mm-hmm. once that programs don't change people. Uh, that God uses people mm-hmm. to change people. Mm-hmm. And so we try to have that healthy understanding that life-wise, what is life-wise? Mm-hmm. It's just a t-shirt. It's just a, <laughs> you know, a structure and some softwares and, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's all important stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's just the trellis mm-hmm. on which the organic relationships mm-hmm. and opportunities for ministry um to take place. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the things, I mean, like we're sitting next to a dynamo right here. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, because uh, the kids really kind of, I mean, to watch Rayma in class, the kids really respond, mm-hmm. you know, and I know she has probably a couple instances where uh, just, you know, the excitement level of kids just to come into class. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know they're going to get good instruction, but they're going to, you know, be with mm-hmm. uh, my, my, my teacher, mm-hmm. the one that's listening to me. So, any stories or anything that comes to mind? I you said Her Majesty. Did you oh, okay. earlier did today? I mean, I mean, you're in the midst of royalty, both. You know? Royalty. Oh, right, my right. goodness. Your brother, but they're yeah. royalty. That's right. That's right. Still a high title. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's Very it. common. Men of God. Yeah. Right, yeah. Sure. Um, so, Rayma, I, I want to hear uh, more stories from you, but you're just making me think, Vince. Of, so we had a gentleman and uh, his daughter, fly in from Virginia. You guys remember when uh, uh, Mark flew in Mm -hmm. and to see what was happening because he's interested. What is happening in Columbus, Ohio? Mm -hmm. And he got to meet with the whole uh, the whole team. And afterwards, as we're leaving your church, Rama, I guess both your churches, um, he said, 
this is really incredible, but here's your challenge. These people, it's all about these people, this team of people. How did mm-hmm. you find these people? <laughs> like, they're amazing. And I got to share, and he, so he's basically saying, like, how could you possibly, you can't scale this quality of people. Mm-hmm. He's seeing that as a challenge. And I said, yeah, I know. That's, in fact, the most, I think, miraculous thing about what the Lord is doing with LifeWise is how he's just mm-hmm. raising up the mm-hmm. right people mm-hmm. for this that mm-hmm. blows our minds. Mm-hmm. And that we're just trusting he'll do the same mm-hmm. in other cities. Mm-hmm. We know God has his people. Mm-hmm. And so that's all to say one more time that I know I'm sitting with those people right now, <laughs> your majesty. And we're and, sitting with you. And so, so you are <laughs> sitting with me. You um, have stooped to uh, uh, to have this conversation. Oh and, and Superwoman. So Raymond, tell us... Um, <laughs> Us. And likewise, you always get new titles. So that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Every so you are official. <laughs> Every ninety days, and yeah. we're growing, we're running out of titles. Right. So they have to keep escalating. Growth brings new titles. <laughs> that's exactly I love right. That. Um, so, Rima, tell us a bit about that. Um, Vince was sharing, and I've heard him share this: how kids will share things in class yes. that they probably wouldn't share in school. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen that? Have you heard that? What are what are some of the things you're seeing kids share? Um, you know, it's even this year, just some of the things that I've been hearing. Um, and it can be really heartbreaking just to see how normalized these kind of things are mm. for the children that they go through. It's just this is an everyday occurrence, everyday experience. Um, we had one gentleman and this was just this year, maybe about three weeks ago. And he was talking about how his phone was ringing. And so he picked up and he was like, oh, this is my mom. She's in jail. I need to answer the call. Um, And then um, he was having a conversation with Brother Brian, who drives the bus to pick them up as he was staying in the class. And um, he said, my teacher lets me answer her calls whenever she calls, even if it's class time, I can answer. And so just thinking, Mm -hmm. and then he has no idea where his dad is Mm -hmm. at all. So just the the mom's in jail mom's in jail and he doesn't know where his dad is Mm -hmm. and just to think how incredible like he's here like that's what i felt you know Mm -hmm. in that moment like what an opportunity that we have as a program on behalf of lifewise here at ccc Mm -hmm. to have this boy here Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, And to be able to pour into him, be able to listen to him, give him a listening ear. And he had a very tough exterior, um, even just with profane language and things Mm -hmm. like that. Um, Mm -hmm. And so just being able to understand where he comes from, but Mm -hmm. still hold a standard Mm -hmm. and still hold expectations for him. We could tell that he was receptive to that um, and said, I I can I can do better. I can try to do better with that, you know, and so grateful gratitude, you know, to have him there. Mm -hmm. Um, This was just last week when I was teaching at the end of class. um, Our pastor has been talking with us about how God can't get the sound of your voice anywhere else on this planet. He can't Mm. get your voice and he can't hear your voice anywhere else. And so instead of me just praying over the children, which is what I'll normally do is pray with them, take their prayer request and pray with them. I told them, I said, God wants to hear your voice Mm -hmm. and he wants to hear what you're thinking about. And he created your voice. He wants to hear it. He wants to hear you talk to him and just to hear the things that these kids were praying. Um, I was just like, this is invaluable. This is invaluable. And maybe they've never had someone open the floor for them Mm -hmm. to say, talk to God right now. He wants to hear you no matter what time it is or what you've seen, what you're going through, what's been done to you. He cares about hearing from you. I had not one child say, I don't know what to say. And I don't, I don't want to No, They, they Mm -hmm. were happy to have that opportunity and very gorgeous. That's Very awesome. gorgeous experience. That's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you for what you do. Thank you kids. for for creating this <laughs> yes. this opportunity for us to take a hold of. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean. Mm-hmm. It's 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 the work and the will of God is mm-hmm. very clear because it's so needed um, all over. Can can I ask a, another level of question? Uh, because as you are learning from the kids, mm-hmm. how do you communicate? what you're hearing to the church and what's the church's response to like the dynamics that students are dealing with 
Um, how does the church, you know, engage, respond to some of the things that you're sharing? Well, I do know that um, we have a prayer team at our church that continues to play, pray for LifeWise. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big thing is that they're praying on a consistent basis mm -hmm. for the success of LifeWise. And then um, we haven't had the opportunity this year to um, get on the platform and let the church know what's going on with LifeWise. I'm pretty sure we'll put that into place. A lot of the changes that has happened this year kind of like, um, I don't want to say, it kind of like didn't allow for us to have an avenue to make sure that we are um, communicating with the church, but we need to definitely put that back in place to make mm -hmm. sure that even Pastor Forbes is more aware and then also that we are communicating to the church like what's going on. Mm -hmm. But I do know um, last year we were always reaching out letting them know like we need volunteers, praying mm -hmm. that we get the volunteers, praying for the students, making sure that, you know, they're aware of whatever needs that the students may have. Mm -hmm. So we were communicating that way through our announcements that mm -hmm. we have on Sundays. So okay. that's how we were keeping them involved okay. and informed. Awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. Vince, I have a thought that you and I have discussed, and I don't know if it's wise for me to ask you a question about this. I know we're recording this conversation. Right, you guys know we're recording this conversation? <laughs> we are. Really? Yeah, that's what that mic is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, Best test. <laughs> but uh, as I think about how God's raising up people in the city, I've heard you talk about there's you're you're learning. There's a couple of different types of people. There's the talkers and there's the doers. Oh boy! <laughs> no, I asked that question. And uh, that um, that you're. Oh You're finding out who's who. Oh boy! And nice. um, again, we don't have to ever let anyone see, hear this recording. Theoretically, are we throwing okay. anybody I, under the bus? Or I, I mean, what's going no, on? This, I won't mention names. Well, certainly don't mention names. But um, this is my bus right here. He touches the bus. Vroom. Um, do you what? What do you mean by that when you say that? Um, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I found it emboldening when I've heard you okay. uh, talk about those things. Okay, so I'm I'm praying even now because the Bible talks about praying without ceasing. <laughs> so I'm praying for wisdom in this response. But I'll be clear. Um, there's a scripture, Matthew 9, uh, and I think it's 37, 38, that says, uh, The harvest is ripe, mm -hmm. but the laborers are few. Mm -hmm. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest would send forth mm -hmm. laborers, and when I think about this mission and I think about this platform that God has given us, this is not a life wise thing. God has created a platform to be able to reach those that otherwise are not coming. When I heard about life wise, the, the one thing that always resonates in my mind is that 80 percent of young people are not coming to church. Okay. So what that says to me is our formula as the body of Christ to reach the lost has there there has to be an adjustment somewhere right. and so if we have this platform to re-engage uh communities through school systems where 90 percent of the students are and that represents families then as outreach according to matthew uh, 28 where he says to go you therefore we have a mission field right in our own backyards mm -hmm. and whatever our church uh priorities are uh, when I look at kingdom priorities, kingdom priorities has always been go. Yeah. And we have a platform to go. And so it's hard when you're hearing, you know, what are some of the challenges to going, you know, and and this is the part might, that might get me in trouble. We talk about faith and we'll put numbers to faith as a barrier as opposed to trusting God who we talk about you know, has cattle on a thousand hills That's and right. will provide. And so it's just taking, you know, the steps. Um, and I think, you know, what I love about LifeWise is that we have a system in terms of walking communities through. Right. Mm -hmm. And God has been faithful where, you know, one of the challenges within the city and just being real is resources. Sure. And we have, you know, churches that are strategically located, but may not have the congregational size to be able to support it, but they have the want to. Yeah. We know that it's a priority to reach our community. We'll tell you up front that finances might be an issue, but we are we are available. Use our space. And then that just means we have to rally around so that no kid is denied learning the gospel mm -hmm. based on resources. When we serve God who has it all, right. you know, why are we hesitant to move forth in faith 
to be able to reach those that God has commanded us to go and reach. And that's um, part of the strategy of Citywide, right? Is that Absolutely. we kind of recognized a couple of years ago that we're having these conversations in particular neighborhoods mm -hmm. and their resources are scarce. But then we zoom out a little bit and we're like, wait a minute, the city of Columbus has lots of money mm -hmm. flowing through it. Um, so it's like a financial center for the state of Ohio. So how do we, well, how, we gotta figure out a way to make that work. And so centralizing some of the fundraising mm -hmm. um, and yet then localizing, neighborhoodizing, is that a word? Area <laughs> Neighborhood Ising? Can you, can you um, use the term area? <laughs> area, area, area Ising, um, <laughs> a lot of the work. Um, and we've seen success with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like we've had, uh, you know, a dinner of businessmen send us a six figure check saying, oh. heard you're working in the inner city. Mm -hmm. Here you go, like uh, unannounced. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, but it is calling out the, it's calling out those who want to really do something and mm -hmm. not just talk about it. And mm -hmm. I remember sitting with you in a, uh, in a different city, not Columbus, <laughs> with a pastor, and you're pouring your heart out about how this can work mm -hmm. in, his, in his city. And he said, you know what, follow up with me in 90 days. And Vincent <laughs> just about jumped out of his seat <laughs> and said, 90 days? We got kids dying out there <laughs> that don't... Have right. the gospel ninety follow up in ninety days, and uh, brother, I love that passion. Yeah. You. you need a Vincent Coleman. <laughs> everybody needs yeah, a Vincent everybody. Coleman. Yeah. But I was thinking, if I may, yes, um, you may. Just what both of you all were saying, um, just about. I just think about that verse. I want to say it's in Isaiah that willing and obedient mm -hmm. is on both sides of those who are distributing resources yep. and then those that don't have it, but really can start putting something together yes. and can answer the call and say, okay, we're going to trust God and we are going to be willing and obedient to make this thing work and make this thing happen. And so it, it works on both ends of the spectrum. Yes. Is what and I'm definitely noticing. to jump in with that too, is that not everybody can be on the front lines. But Absolutely. everybody can participate. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. it takes people all yeah. at every level. That's so, right. Absolutely. you know, to support the Ramas on the front lines, mm -hmm. we need those that can contribute um, financially so that, you know, we can do. And, and we're all do I mean, it's all of us doing this work, mm -hmm. you know, so it takes each one of us as a body working together to do our part so that we can fund the work. And it's not about any of us getting glory. Mm -hmm. It's God getting the glory. Yes. Right. And he's blessed some to be providers, some mm -hmm. to be front lines, some to be bus drivers. So some how to we host uh, podcast conversations. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <Yeah>. Great man. <laughs> yes. to do. Really hard work. <laughs> Asking I questions. You sweating. Do we have any tissue? Can we get a towel? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Um, so Cynthia, mm -hmm. as the as the superwoman, <laughs> who really helped get things going. The title. <laughs> um, we are recording this. We I don't know how much we'll keep in it, but um, if there's somebody watching who's in a different city, mm -hmm. and and I think you would probably say honestly that not everything's been easy. Um, I know that not right. everything's been easy. Right. And so they're staring down this potential opportunity of getting involved, rolling up their sleeves. Mm -hmm. What would you say to them? I would just, um, as we're quoting scriptures, <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to me, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, mm. lean not to thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge God, and he'll direct our paths. And that's the mm. thing. You have to trust him to direct your path mm. in each and every step that it will take to launch a life wise in their city. Because the biggest thing that we want to make sure is that one, of course, God gets the glory to that we're allowing our children to be able to know who God is mm -hmm. so that he can get the glory in their lives. And so with the RTR, I always mess it up, release time, religious instruction. Right. Yes. It. Being a tool that will help kids get to know God, mm -hmm. like don't give up hope. Yeah. Of course, the enemy is going to come in and stop you. He's going to do his job 150 percent. He's going to make you think that it can work. Right. But with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can't lose hope. You have to trust and know that if you start something, God is going to finish it yes. and just make it happen and have that passion and that zeal and that tenacity to do whatever it takes. And don't give up on our kids because they need us because mm -hmm. they need a life wise. Yeah. 
because what's a sacrifice when the trajectory of a child's life is completely changed? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you have to make a sacrifice here and there, I mean, we know there's going to be those any way. But mm-hmm. I think recognizing, wow, the actual way that this person's life was going mm-hmm. will be completely changed. And mm-hmm. a lot of times when I'm even talking with the kids in class, I can see, wow, what if in 15 years they're teaching? Yeah. Do you know what yes. I mean? Mm-hmm. In life wise, mm-hmm. kid, like I was sitting where you're sitting yes. and look at where I am now, mm-hmm. the things that God has done in my life, who yes. he's created me um, or brought me to the true identity of who I am. Um, there's just, you can't put anything, you can't say, oh, well, you know, this is, is too much or I can't, or mm-hmm. when that is on the line, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Cynthia, you said hope, uh, man, you guys are speaking the LifeWise language up here. Um, <laughs> You said hope. I, you combine those two things of hope, hope, prayer, faith, mm-hmm. and get out there and get it done mm-hmm. in a way that few people do that is at the center of what we want to be about mm-hmm. with LifeWise. We mm-hmm. talk about working smarter mm-hmm. and harder mm-hmm. by God's grace, mm-hmm. recognizing that God's grace manifests mm-hmm. through our hard work. Mm -hmm. If we were able to get up early this morning Mm -hmm. and get to work, it's because God enabled Mm -hmm. us to get up. Mm -hmm. Like God answers prayer Mm -hmm. through people. through praying Mm -hmm. for Vince before God just dropped Vince (laughs) right into that room (laughs) several years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love that. And then Rayma, you said sacrifice. That's a word that we've been saying around here a lot that um, that LifeWise runs on sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That it, there's not a single squishy bus <laughs> that is distributed. There's not a Bible lesson that is taught. There's not um, a class that is held. There's n- nothing happens without somebody making a sacrifice. Yeah. And that that is the Christian experience. Yes. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that someone sacrificed mm-hmm. for us. That's Jesus right. shed his blood for mm-hmm. us. And if you want to pick up a cross mm-hmm. and to find your life in mm-hmm. dying for others, mm-hmm. then come along yeah. and, and trust in him. And what mm-hmm. a beautiful opportunity to do that mm-hmm. um, for these kids, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, it's right. so pure. Um, what else? What else, Vince? <laughs> well, I mean, Answer you, it. You talking, <laughs> right, well, no, uh, I, 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 I'm glad you gave me that lead in because I did want to make sure so what I, else? I get this, uh, this point across. When you talk about expanding into other cities and you talk about leaders, uh, you know, I applaud like the Dr. Forbes, the, the mm-hmm. Bishop mm-hmm. Clarks uh, that uh, just have that heart to reach the next generation. My pastor, Pastor Yavis, where um, uh, I can mention pastors names all over the city. It takes pastors that really have that outreach mindset um, mm-hmm. to to really kind of uh, I mean, I think Dr. Dr. Forbes being first, I mean, he was like a. A, 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 a spark that just he really went to bat. Wrong. He Absolutely. went to bat, and and you want to talk about um, you know just a um, a propeller just to kind of push things forward. Mm-hmm. When you get somebody that has a heart and they see it mm-hmm. like you see it, mm-hmm. it just pushes you. And so leaders in these different cities, um, when you really kind of embrace it and see it for what it is, it's the gospel. Simple opportunity. Uh, you know, I, I say that the gospel is uh, a simple. Um, strategy, uh, a, a, a simple means to reach complex, complex problem, a uh, simple solution to complex problems. There mm-hmm. it is. Yes. Uh, but the gospel is a simple solution to complex problems and where leaders within cities see it and can pull, join together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not something that we would ask anyone to do in and of themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. We do need the catalyst to get it started, yeah. but we're seeing how we come together uh, for a common cause. We're under one uh, banner. And uh, when you have visionary leaders that see it and can pull mm-hmm. the community together to do it, um, you know, one can chase a thousand to flight, mm-hmm. two can put 10,000 to flight. So when we come together, we're better together, city to city. Who are the leaders that would just see it? And who do you know that you could partner up with uh, and make this happen on a broader scale? That's, I love it. Um, it and I'm, as you're talking and you mentioned other cities, I'm realizing that we're, if we're having this conversation the day after we received official, oh. official approval. Mem- 
Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, over a yeah, hundred schools now in right. the Memphis wow. area that I mean, we're not going to start them all right. day one, <laughs> right? But we're <laughs> starting with four. Apparently, four more have been identified. Absolutely, awesome. and yeah. we're Incredible. rolling. Yes. they are that ready is to awesome. roll. Yeah. It is wow. needed. Yeah, throughout all public schools everywhere mm-hmm. in the U.S. Mm-hmm. everywhere and yes. abroad. Yes, our children need to know right. about God, right. and that they're not being taught. And so they're just out here wilding out, He's doing whatever. He's being hidden. He's yeah. being yes. hidden in the world. Mm-hmm. And something we've learned too um, <laughs> under Dr. Forbes is that the earth is the Lord's, but the world is the enemy's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yep. the world is trying to hide and conceal yep. God. Mm-hmm. Um, so the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but we're still going in to the world Mm -hmm. and capturing Mm -hmm. the hearts and minds of these children. It's Mm -hmm. such precious work. Can I ask a question to both of you? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Okay. Vince may have to answer. I'm not not good at answering. I'm only good at the asking of the questions. It's a lie. (laughs) Okay. Um, I am curious. I'll start with you. Um, What would be for you, um, Mr. Coleman, Um, One of the things that you've noticed in your life, um, how has it been affected by just the work that you're doing in life wise? Wow. Um, That is a great question. So I'm a former educator and, um, you know, I think, uh, man, that's a, that's a full question. Um, (laughs) So let me go back. Uh, Seven years old. I'm a kid come to uh, Columbus from Detroit, uh, Michigan. Um, and, uh, <laughs> go Bucks. <back. laughs> That's right. Um, but I did worry all those amazing I things I was saying. I take them grow back. Up. <laughs> I didn't grow up in the church. So in a lot of ways I can identify with being an unchurched public school kid. Mm-hmm. And I look at the things that I had to navigate through mm-hmm. and what would it have been like for me, uh, to have this level of support. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a kid, very influential mm-hmm. influence, you know, mm-hmm. influenceable. Uh, and so if I had the right influence, mm-hmm. you know, early, you know, what type of, you know, how would that have transformed things? But going through that experience, it just drives to make sure that, you know, if we have this available. Why not be able to, you know, mobilize people and really kind of impact kids? Because, you know, when you look at what kids go through mm-hmm. and the hurt, the wounds, and they're trying to process, you know, make sense out of life and nobody's there to really kind of, you know, uh, grab hold of them and mm-hmm. say, it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm here. To, I, I, let me, let me walk with you. That is to me, the motivator behind it. So going through education uh, and being a teacher, being a principal and seeing that time after time and recognizing that there was a spiritual disconnect that mm-hmm. kids uh, will have knowing that, Hey, I'm going to, I'm a, I'm a believer first. Mm-hmm. So if it costs me my job to pray with a family mm-hmm. or to, I'm going to do what God has put in my heart mm-hmm. to do. And now I have an opportunity to where we can keep our teachers safe in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, uh, their faith, uh, you know, and how they share their faith by hosting a LifeWise program and mm-hmm. mobilizing a, a caring community of believers to mm-hmm. get involved to me is priceless in terms of being able to do this work. That's yeah. excellent. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So much. You should have went first. So astute. <laughs> I'm not sure we have time for me to answer the question now. I think no, we have you... time. I oh, think we okay. have time. Yeah. Okay. So I I so admire you and just the the answer to the call that mm-hmm. you know that God has placed over your life and just saying yes, really. Um, I'm a big advocate of say yes to God. Mm-hmm. He'll figure the rest out. <laughs> just say yeah. re- just say yes and he'll figure out the rest. Um, for you, what would you say to someone that I know God has called me to something, but cause in this case, this is really huge. It's really a big thing and it can feel for a lot of people. I think I know God's calling me to do something, but it feels so large. It feels so like, I don't know what to do or how to even respond or I get boggled down by this, the weight and the the largeness of it, what would you say to someone that knows they're called by God, but it's a big thing um, and just moving forward and being obedient? Oh, good question. Um, well, I've always told people that I, every now and then people don't thank me for doing what I do. And I, it's mm-hmm. always kind of weird because I tell them I don't feel like I have a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I never have with this. When this fell in my lap, there was no real deciding. I was compelled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to do like I, I just felt like woe is me if yeah. I don't do this. Yeah. Um, and I would say ignorance was helpful in that I didn't realize how big it was. <laughs> um, don't look into how big it is. At all. You'll only get discouraged. Yeah. Um, no, that's not good advice. Um, I would. I mean, I wish my advice could be. Um, super sophisticated or something um but i would say i think that we just too regularly um put a too low of a ceiling on the lord Mm -hmm. and um and that's easy to say god is infinite but i think what the lord can do through Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. um and so i mean that when i say the whole work smarter and harder by the grace of god um I think people can wake up earlier than they think they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that people can uh, work faster than they think they can. Mm-hmm. Um, not because they're super amazing, but because God can use them to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that people can have a bigger vision of what can be accomplished, that there's they put borders and barriers around themselves and what they think is possible. Um, and... And maybe, maybe we should have more. <laughs> maybe we should have, but we we even will set these goals. You know, the the classic is we said uh, probably right around the time that Mifflin was getting started. We our big goal was to serve twenty five schools by twenty twenty five. Wow, twenty five by twenty five. Yeah. Wow. This year we're confirmed to serve three hundred and forty eight schools wow. Wow. here in twenty twenty three. Just starting. Just starting. Wow. And we seem to be just starting. Yeah. Um, so d- don't limit God and yeah. don't limit. I do want to say don't limit what God can do through you. Mm-hmm. Um, he just keeps showing up. And I do. I <clears throat> I want to say that I've learned to have a stronger faith, mm-hmm. but that I feel like I have to learn it every couple of days. Like <clears throat> yeah, I'll learn in a moment. Sure. God brings the right person mm-hmm. or yeah. God brings mm-hmm. the right uh, check for funding. Mm-hmm. And I'm like. Why was I lacking such yeah. faith? Yeah. And that lasts for about 48 hours. Yeah. And I'm like, well, maybe God isn't going to send, yeah. you know? And yeah. so um, I've rambled, but you got to trust the Lord. He, he really yeah. can do it. He really he can. He really can. Yeah. yeah. What's something that you didn't know when you started and now you know through the process that you can't forget? Oh my goodness. I see ask you that question. <clears throat> what didn't I know? I'll be honest, I didn't know how I didn't know the level of hunger for this mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. Um when I um when we start got this thing going, uh it was inspired by a program in my hometown of Van Wert, Ohio which is a small town. Mm -hmm. Go Cougars. Go Cougars. (laughs) Well said, (laughs) sir. You've stayed in my parents' house. That's good. That's good. good. Oh, yeah, good good cooking. Y'all good eating. That's that's loyalty right there. That's right. That's That's loyalty. That's right. Um, My mama (laughs) Penton. And it's like a rite of passage. How many staff members you stayed in? Did did you stay in my house when you came to Van Wert? Yeah. I came to Van Wert, but I didn't say no. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, you got to oh. stop. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What are we talking about? We're waiting for the <laughs> invite then, right? right, right, right. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Um, so I, you know, that's small town. So I thought this could happen in every small town mm-hmm. in America. That's what I thought. And yeah. then I thought, I hope it can happen in every city. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it can happen in every suburb, like if in my heart of hearts, that's what I really thought. Yeah. And the way the Lord has flung the doors mm-hmm. wide open and we'll hear from suburban, from mm-hmm. city administrators that mm-hmm. our kids need this. How yeah. soon can we, mm-hmm. the, the school district that I would have put at the top of the list of places, this will never work in mm-hmm. central Ohio. When we met, went and met with them and asked to do one school pilot, they said, that's fine, but how soon can you get to all five elementary schools? Wow. That was their mm-hmm. response. Mm-hmm. And I just would never and never have imagined that hunger. Sure, mm-hmm. we hit the school districts where there's resistance, mm-hmm. but it, I, and so then all of a sudden the responsibility feels greater. 
-hmm. because a phrase we've been using around here now is for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my, Mm -hmm. now is the time Mm -hmm. that the hunger is there. Mm -hmm. The support is there. God is raising up the people. And then it's like, I hope we don't mess it up. You know, like it's just this like major responsibility. Um, And I didn't realize, you know, that just the openness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much, how much it would just be like, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. That'd be, we said 25 by 25. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, we haven't even and, that's, 25 yet, right? Right. and that's what I was saying about just starting, like yeah. just starting just with start. the 25, just get going. Just mm-hmm. get going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Man, she really hijacked this whole thing. <laughs> right. She's going to start asking me questions. I come here to ask the questions. I, as a host, brother, uh, you might have some competition. Here. That's right. She's Ooh. pretty Sometimes pretty an accent, it just comes out. And right oh, now, all I'm saying is... Very polished. There was things I wanted to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? <laughs> it, yes. if, it, if it wants to come out. It yes. will. So I'll just mm-hmm. let it out there. So that's okay. what happens. Huh. But yeah, I just wanted Definitely to know fine. and pick your pick your brains a little bit with your accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> this oh is a fourth. Goodness. Do you know <laughs> who you have in all your the time. presence all the time? Uh, that's royalty. So how about this final thing? Um, how about a prayer request from each of us, and then we'll close this conversation in prayer. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Give okay. you some more time to think. Okay. Uh, I just want to pray. For, I would ask that you'd pray for wisdom. Um, mm-hmm. We're now, you know, we're making decisions now that mm-hmm. I never imagined we'd be making, and mm-hmm. things seem weightier. Things see, things seem bigger, and they're not bigger than God. But um, we just need a lot of wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, for me, it's just uh, praying against opposition. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, just the spiritual warfare and there there are so many different opposing um, forces mm-hmm. that are against. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I when I s- s- think of it, I think of it from the standpoint of the opposition is keeping the word from going forward and whatever needs to come down so that the word can go forward. Because it's, sometimes it's hard when you get, you know, when when they don't see it. The bottom, the end user is the the children, mm-hmm. um, and when we when you look at the needs of the kids mm-hmm. and you're keeping such a vital resource out, that's a, a spiritual warfare mm-hmm. component. Mm-hmm. That yeah. so spiritual warfare is mm-hmm. ra- on my radar today. Okay, yeah. that was mine. No, it, spiritual warfare. Are you gonna take it? From I'm not. I'm, I was. I was just saying that. I mean, Bible's, you know, it's applicable to all. So to all. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual warfare <laughs> is is very real. And then I like how you said that it's just trying to keep the word of God from being um, dispersed and being pushed mm-hmm. out. Um, so that was definitely something that was on my heart to say. But I'll also say just that I would focus more on the sovereignty of God Mm -hmm. in every situation Mm -hmm. Um, that because of who I am in Christ, I have authority over the things Mm -hmm. that feel like they're really trying to, to knock me off. So yeah. Yeah. Sovereignty Mm -hmm. of God focusing on that. Awesome. I think mine's would be collaboration with the churches. Mm -hmm. Like we're one man (laughs) and the unity is so important. And if we can get the unity Mm -hmm. to come together and support life wise, oh my gosh. Oh. We would be amazing. Yeah. So the unity of the collaboration with the churches in all communities. There's no hidden agenda for any of the churches but to support life wise mm-hmm. and the needs of life wise to help the churches be able to use their buildings right. so that the children can come to and learn about God because that's why the building is there in the first place. Right. So. Yeah, amen. And life, yeah. life wise, just uh, again, a just a tool, a t shirt, yes. uh, but you know, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, those are good. I, can I add one more? Yes, yeah. um, 
back to your statement, Vince, about the uh, workers, the laborers for the mm-hmm. harvest, because mm-hmm. this is being recorded. And hopefully, a few people make it all the way to the end. Yes. I hope I hope people hear the British accent. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, that does not need we to stay on. We have to give the it. commercial. <laughs> we are commercial keep... at the no. beginning. Oh, at the beginning, that's stay the tuned. teaser. Stay tuned. That's the British teaser. accent, you know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I was confident when you said, you know, we don't have to keep everything. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go. But anywhere. We're keeping the good stuff. <laughs> we're keeping the good stuff, which oh, that's. Gosh. Um, so yeah, so laborers, um, in the harvest field that, uh, people in other cities, um, would be raised up and, uh, and all these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, wisdom and, uh, against the uh, barriers and, Mm -hmm. and spirit and for spiritual warfare Mm -hmm. and, uh, unity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So who do you think should pray Vince? Not you, you and I pray on these microphones all the time. Which Mm -hmm. of these two ladies should pray for us? (laughs) Do, 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 do. Right. <laughs> Superwoman, that's how awesome. Superwoman, Superwoman, Wonder 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 we conclude our conversation yeah. with prayer. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. First, Father God, we just give you glory and honor for life wise in itself mm-hmm. and for Joel Penton and the vision that you have given him, Father God, to raise up a life wise for the world to see. And so, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you continue to give wisdom, Father God, to all, Father God, that are taking in a part to make sure that we can push. It's not truly Joel's vision, but it's your vision that you've given to him. And so we thank you, Father God, that you just impart into all who need need to be involved, whether it be financially, whether it be um, volunteering hands and feet, Father God, whether it be supporting um, on a regular basis, Father God, we just thank you that you lead and guide all of your people who you need, Father God, to be able to help this vision. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Father God, that obstacles that try to get in the way that you give strategy, Father God, on how to um, fight against the enemy, Father God, and, and his tactics on how the people, Father God, um, can be discouraged. We just thank you, Lord, that, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it's spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we just thank you that, Lord God, we are equipped and we are um, dressed fully in our armor, Father God, mm-hmm. to fight any tactics that the enemy tries to to dispel against us, Father God. We just thank you that we put an end to it in Jesus' name. We thank yes. you, Father God, for the blood. We plead the blood over every evil spirit, every evil person, every every evil thing and every evil plan of the enemy that he tries to devise against life wise, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Father God, for just blessing the churches to open up their ears to hear you, Father God. We are one man. This is the kingdom of God. And we thank you, Father God, that you allow the Holy Spirit to speak into the hearts of the pastors, that they will come together, Father God, that they will hear about life wise. I can't imagine if they haven't, but if they heaven, Father God, that you will send laborers even to them, Father God, and that they will have an open and willing heart to work with churches, whether it be non-denominational, whether it be Catholic, whether it be Protestant, whatever it is, Father God, we just thank you that we come together, Father, as one man to push this vision to help the children. It's all about the children and them knowing you and who you are so that they can grow up, Father God, and, and, and share your word to the world. And so we just thank you and praise you, Father God. God, that all will be done in your name, yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 That's why. My, that's why I did that. Super woman. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Three of my favorite people. This is so fun. Yeah. So I think fun. we should do it, it again nice. sometime. We, we absolutely yeah. should. Yes. Full on accent. Man. My, my <laughs> alter ego. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Just joking. All right. Thank you All for right. having thank, us. Thank yes. You. Thank we you for having time. us. Our pleasure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. We'll come back anytime. All right. We'll do it. All right. <laughs>